culture. Uh, that's one of Florida's Native American cultures that dated between about 200 and 1000 AD. Their people lived in smaller villages, um, but they came together at different times of the year and in different places to build larger mounds for religious uh, purposes. The Spring Warrior Mound Complex is one of those types of mounds. Uh, there are several mounds at the site. We're gonna assess whether or not there was damage from uh, the recent hurricanes. We're gonna see if there are overturned trees or other stuff and see what sort of condition the mounds are in. We're getting ready to go into the uh, Spring Warrior Mound Complex, which is a Whedon Island site. And uh, there, there are a number of ceremonial mounds, plus uh, probably a ceremonial, ceremonial feasting area uh, that has in it the sacred and secular pottery for the Whedon Island peoples. It's one of the larger Weedon Island Mound complexes in the state of Florida. There are a number of them. but there is one thing I think that he's on to that I saw in the Akawaha in a similar environment to this. When you've got a flat sheet like this, this area out here, even though it's slightly up like that, that's a true midden. Oh, when yeah, you've so got piles no of faunal material, it almost always is something that was deliberately human created, like a mound for a mound base. Because on the Akawaha, you had both sand mounds and you had sand and shell mounds, but they followed the same configuration. And they, I believe, were all built by the same people there. Here, we're talking about the Weedon Island culture, uh, presumably, if they were doing feasting. Now, look at that. When they're talking about black dirt midden, that's what soil looks that's, like. Yeah. When you've got, uh, right here, when, you, when you've got this, soil is this that's this color one by one, it may be. This is where you're going to have uh, organic Jim? that's been turned to the soil. When an archaeologist speaks of a midden of any kind, they're talking about an area where people disposed of trash, usually food trash. What we're looking at here at this site is a midden for the people that built this mound complex. You can see broken bits of shell and other materials. This is the area when they refer to a black dirt midden where they're talking about organic uh, faunal material like food bones, like shell, are mixed into the soil and turn the soil darker. But a midden, essentially, at any archaeological site is a garbage heap. Over here. Okay, you can see, um, it's, that's the harvester ant nest. Yeah. Where I got all those oh, micro here. fish bones. These are all, yeah, these are all pot shirts. Yeah, I mean, it's all over the place. Uh, by our little friend here. And this general erosion. Oh, Play bowl, cooking bowl, a, a rock cooking bowl, maybe? I'm thinking, or, or possibly somewhere where they're rubbing up against it. And what's weird about this is, I mean, I've seen Weedon Island pottery from several of the different Weedon Island subcultural areas. Like for example, the Weedon Island culture over where I did all of my doctoral research, you know, where I grew up in central Florida is Cades Pond, Weedon Island. But look at this. This piece right here has got like grit chunks, uh, chunks of, uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, quartz scattered through it. You usually don't see that. Weed Island pottery is usually very, very fine. 
and the fact that this doesn't have some of the, I mean, it's plain and, and you know, of course they're gonna be using plain things as well, but even Weed Island, what's so-called uh, uh, secular pottery, like the ordinary stuff they cook with, usually doesn't look like that. From this point, just go around in a circle. <laughs> and if you really look at the high def air photos, you can see this piece of ground is, has this circular kind of thing going on, which is interesting. Yeah because Spring Warrior Creek is right back there and it sort of flows around and goes into the Gulf of Mexico. And if sea levels were higher sometime, say during the Wheaton Island time frame, might Spring Creek have been just a coastal lagoon kind of thing. And like Homosassa Springs may have attracted a lot of the marine fish to it, as you know, Homosassa does today, that Spring Warrior served us at, and then if sea level went back down again, this hadn't been proven. But if sea level went back down again, you're all like, why the heck they put it here? But back then it would have made sense. You could get canoes up here, you could do the fishing in the spring fed creek, and for whatever reasons, you know, the Jack of Corval and all those kinds of fish love it. So, A long while ago I actually think a lot of this may be his his pits because he didn't take good care of the way a modern-day archaeologist would he just dug into the mound and, and hit whatever he could find now, hold on just a minute you were talking about looking over here I think I may see all right that's still green hey Jim Now you got another fallen thing right up. Oh wow. Man, yeah. You got a lot of the pits back in here? Yeah. It's this is we're in the heart of mound country.
outside. I think this is the tallest mound out here. Uh, maybe, or, I don't, or, I don't or remember. Maybe, or it may be the most abrupt. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, it was 10, it was more than 10 years ago that we were here. We finished the, the publication. It wasn't super detailed. I was about to say this is just a complicated stamp. You've got like the curving lines right there, but look at this right here. It's like you've also got lines or scratches across the stamp. John documented that from the Suwannee Valley component at uh, Fig Springs, you know, where you've got something very, very similar. So rather than this being stamped, this may be... What you're talking about. This may be a piece of, yeah, Suwannee Valley uh, of Fig Springs complicated, or not complicated stamp, Fig Springs roughened. Some of Fig Springs Rough and the variety that's done with like a scallop shell. You know, it's got, you know, like the round curve things and then you've got cross hatching or you've got stamping with the edge of the shell across it. A whole it, lot of very large, things. obviously they were using these lime rocks for some kind of construction. Well, um, the one that we were on just a while ago had lime rock in the middle of it, which again is also unusual for a long site. Yeah, yeah.